Hello and welcome to AHOA's educational experience. My name is Gene Quinn. I'm co-founder and CEO of TNews Talking Travel Tech. We're a global online media company that covers the digital travel economy uh, from the perspective of uh, technology that affects travel, tourism, and hospitality. And I'm joined here today by my friend Josiah McKenzie, who's the Director of Business Development from ReviewPro, which is a um, firm that manages or helps hotel properties and hospitality organizations manage their social media strategy and reputation management and everything to do with uh, uh, social media in, uh, in their uh, uh, business operation. So welcome, Josiah. Thank you. Um, we're here today to talk about social media and mobile technology and how that affects uh, a hotel operator's uh, um, and hotel manager's uh, life in their business. And uh, uh, we're really glad to be able to have this time to kick that topic around. So uh, I guess a, a great way to start would be to uh, define the problem uh, or, or define the subject. So uh, Josiah, could you uh, give an overview of what we mean by social media and what some of the opportunities might be for hotel operators? Sure, so social media might be defined as electronic communication where their users create and share various types of media with each other. And so the big impact on the hotel industry is that this has really changed the power dynamic where all of this peer-to-peer -peer content is being created. People are talking about a wide variety of topics, but of course some of those topics are travel and hotels. And so this conversation is really an extension of word of mouth that has happened for hundreds of years offline. It just provides new opportunities to connect people and it's changed the way that hotels can communicate. It's less of a one-way communication channel and it's changed uh, the way hotels have to advertise and market where it's more of participating in a conversation that already exists. You know, it's worth to, to uh, um, dawdle a little bit on that topic. Uh, my perspective is there's a lot of folks from the pre-digital media world um, who are intimidated uh, by what Twitter and Facebook and some of the devices that are in the hands of the consumer uh, mean to their business. They see a lot of power in the hands of the consumer, the power to criticize, the power to research on their own, the power to avoid standard forms of marketing that for many years were um, the way traditional um, products and service managers and media companies operated. Can you talk a little bit about what's happened in the last decade, maybe even in the last five years, that hospitality operators need to understand regarding that technology and that power in the consumer's hands? Right. Well, it's my feeling that success in the hotel industry today is really the same as it's always been. It's been about driving financial performance by keeping guests happy because that's going to get them coming back. It's going to get people to tell their friends about uh, the hotel or about the brand. And so the dynamics of how people purchase are, are much of the same. And driving guest satisfaction, of course, is still the same as it's always been. It's about delivering great experiences to customers, making sure that their expectations are exceeded. And it's about always being attentive so that you can design products and services and increasingly experiences that are going to deliver that wow, amazing experience. And so social media just provides a new communication channel to do that. Um, it gives us new opportunities to connect with people. Um, and, and when hospitality organizations are able to do that in, in many different ways, um, it provides just a, a really different way to communicate, but also it, it's very much focused around these principles that have been placed in the hotel industry for hundreds of years. Let's talk a little bit about the, the stages of trip planning and um, the trip of a leisure or business traveler. How has social media affected the way folks look, about, uh, look to plan travel, how they actually perform travel, and how they share it or remember it? Right. Well, it's really interesting when you're designing a social media campaign to think about each of these stages because it provides a framework where you can design a really engaging, compelling social media experience for the people that you're trying to reach. So if you think about the predestination experience, it, this stage of travel can sort of be split down into two parts. One's the dreaming stage where I may not have any idea of where I want to go, but I know that I want to go somewhere. So I'm just brainstorming. I'm out there looking for inspiration and the big opportunity here with social media is that by publishing photos, videos, um, encouraging some of the consumer created content that's out there, maybe someone's written a blog post, 
they've written about their story, this amazing experience that they've had uh, at your, one of your properties, you can encourage a little bit more of that, um, that dreaming stage so that they go to the next stage, which is that booking um, stage when they're ready to make the purchase decision. And the interesting thing about the social media needed at this point is people are often looking to validate their decision to stay at your hotel with the opinions of other guests and other consumers. So they're really attracted emotionally, they want to stay at your property, but they don't want to make a bad decision. And so that's where they go often to review sites and they may post a question to their social network asking for feedback, or if I stay here, am I going to have a good experience? And so this is where we see the reviews playing a really critical role in um, the conversion rates and the amount of sales that, that hotels are able to generate um, at this point. So that's before they arrive. Once someone is already booked, they're on your property or they're in the midst of their travel. This is where we have to sort of switch gears in social media and we have to look at providing service in real time. And fortunately, sites like Twitter, which are very much of a real time environment, people may have questions and they could post it. Um, and whether it's the best way to get from the airport to the, the property or if they're looking for advice on activities to do while they're in the destination, that, that's where monitoring the real-time web becomes very important to provide uh, almost like this virtual concierge and, and take, again, services that you've already provided for your hotel or your brand and just uh, extend that to a new communications channel. And there's a lot of opportunities at this point also for upselling and thinking about um, further monetizing that the value of that guest stay. Um, so once they finish staying at your property, they've checked out, they're headed home, this is where we want to encourage customers to start sharing uh, their experiences and, and hopefully their positive experiences if you've done a good job on taking care of them during their trip. And fortunately, what we see is a lot of people are now sharing content um, about their, their trip on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, some of the bloggers may do an in-depth report on, on their experience. But thinking about social media at each of these stages provides a lot of guidance as you, you look to develop your social media campaign. Can we pick one of those stages? It can be pre, it can be in destination, it can be post destination, but pick one of those stages and talk about some of the logistical challenges or opportunities that a specific property might have in addressing um, a social media strategy. Right, well, our company is focused on reviews, and so most of my experience is working with hotels in optimizing online reputation. And this is where, of all types of social media, this is where it really comes down to the money. Because again, when the decision is made to book, or a guest rather is thinking about, am I going to stay at this property or the hotel across the street? Often that decision is going to be based on social feedback. So in terms of logistics, um, of course it involves monitoring to see what consumers are already saying about your hotel. It involves analysis of feedback that's already out there to understand how do you make improvements in all areas of the business. Um, and fortunately, a lot of that feedback is publicly available and you have access to that. You can also see what your competitors are doing for comparison. But logistically, taking that feedback, and this is true across all aspects of social media, um, is thinking about how do you get the right information to the right people at the right time so they can make decisions on it. And creating insight for action, whether it's reports or individual customer issues that have to be resolved, um, is really critical. So think about that internal communications process and what your policy will be to respond to individual pieces of feedback. You know, there's an ongoing debate because we're still in a formative stage of how to use the social media strategy. Uh, and this ongoing debate is often about the, the, the difference between driving sales, the ROI of social media, versus marketing, um, purely support for sales. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the difference between social media as an advertising or, a, or as a sales strategy, rather, uh, and a marketing strategy? It's a good question. And uh, it's funny, Gene, because when I go to a lot of conferences, I'm always asking people at these hotel brands, how do you calculate ROI of social media? And it seems like 50% of them say that um, their, their whole effort of social media is to generate interest in the brand, and it's to generate some of that um, inbound marketing activity. Uh, and then the other 50% are looking for direct sales through social media. And so we've seen a lot of success in um, some hotels selling directly. Maybe it's a special offer on Twitter. Maybe it's a booking tab on a Facebook page. But I would say the bigger opportunity here is actually beyond that. It's about building this community 
of, of really satisfied, loyal customers and providing one-on-one -on -one individual service um, and, and remarkable service, really exceeding expectations, and doing this in a real-time uh, way. Harvard had a business review released some research recently that talked about um, customer loyalty and retention being tied directly to the speed and quality of issue resolution. So as we have more and more customers going to the social web to express uh, issues that may have been coming up, and then if we're able to resolve those issues very quickly, um, this not only satisfies that individual customer, but then we encourage some of that word of mouth and, and we build an online community of people who love our brand. They're very emotionally connected because um, someone at, at our hotel or someone at the brand stepped up and served that customer. And so I've seen time and uh, again where we have examples of brands that have built these communities and, and actually they have their customers serving and interacting and sometimes even selling with, um, with one another without the brand even getting involved. So it's a really interesting thing when you think about uh, the resource constraints or maybe you don't have the number of personnel that you would like to have on your social media team. If you do a great job with service, a lot of times the other elements of social come into play and eventually you see those, those bookings coming. Thanks, Josiah. Uh, we'll be back to talk about mobile technology in, in, uh, in our next segment. Welcome back to OHOA Educational Experience. My name is Gene Quinn. I'm co-founder and CEO of TNews, and I'm here with my friend Josiah McKenzie from ReviewPro, and we're talking about social media and mobile technology as it affects travel, tourism, and hospitality. And in this segment, we're going to talk more about mobile technology. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, Josiah, um, what do you think the difference has been in um, mobile devices that consumers or, or business travelers uh, have been bringing on their, on their uh, journeys in the past year or two as opposed to five years ago when smartphones were just being introduced into the marketplace in a big way. It's been really interesting to watch the evolution over the past couple years because devices now are smarter, people are more reliant on them, and there's been a very vibrant development community that has developed a wide range of applications for travel. And so now consumers are looking and relying on their travel devices and mobile technologies to support them throughout the travel process. But if I could put the question back to Eugene, as, as CEO of TNews, you cover a lot of new technologies, emerging companies, and what's really stood out or caught your attention as a shift over the past two to three years in terms of mobile technologies affecting travel? Sure. Well, to pick up on a theme that we talked about a few minutes ago on social media, um, the predestination and in-destination difference in how mobile technology is being used is perhaps the most um, recognizable difference uh, in the past couple of years. It used to be folks used their mobile phones, which weren't always smartphones, that tip has just begun to occur, um, to, to check pretty mundane things. They would check for a phone number, they would check for the location of a of a, of, a, of a property, maybe begin their search that they finished on a, on a browser, on a web-based platform. Now we're finding that folks are planning their trips um, using their cell phones or, or their, their smartphones, and then using their phones, smartphones, in destination to complete their trips. And by that I mean they may or may not start their trip planning on a web browser anymore. They may just start it on a, on a smartphone and not finish it until they get to where they're going. Mm -hmm. Right, so a as this change in, uh, in user behavior has, has really uh, emerged, what does that mean for, for hotels in terms of planning, uh, thinking about how to monetize this channel? What are some of the considerations that, that they should be looking at? Well, if, if you are um, any business, whether it's a hospitality business or whether it's a consumer packaged goods business, you have to be well aware that your customer base's shopping uh, habits have completely changed. And from a mobile standpoint, um, you have to keep in mind that some of your, your customer base, both new and loyal customers, are going to be coming at the um, uh, mobile device that they have with them through a smartphone small footprint. And some others are going to be coming at it through a tablet. So there's there more power in visual presentation on what can happen in a tablet. Uh, just recently, um, we, we wrote in T News about a, 
uh, a Nielsen study that showed people are using their smartphones to find and contact businesses, but people are using their tablets to research price, compare properties, and look at reviews. Those tablet functions used to be done on a personal computer, a desktop computer, or a laptop computer. So that's a, a, a very important consideration if you're a property manager. You have to have both devices in mind as you're planning the way you want to reach out um, to your audience with your, with your offers. Uh, another point of information in that Nielsen study was that 33% of mobile searches, uh, searchers want to complete travel transactions in one day or less. Now, that's one study at one point in time, but that's a very large number of folks that are not necessarily impulsive buyers, but are committed buyers. They want the answer, they want it now, because they're, they're ready to buy. And you have to be aware of that if you're a, a travel marketer or, or a property operator, because um, what the consumer sees in your online offering is often seen by someone who can just float over to another property and make that, that purchase uh, decision elsewhere unless you've grabbed them. That's good. And it sounds like there's not only a change in the devices and the formats that we have now at our disposal, but there's this real need to uh, really examine the behaviors of, of our consumers and what is the different mindset that they use as they, they go through their travel experience. I believe David Armano published a piece uh, last week about looking at mobility rather than just thinking mobile. And it's about this new, uh, this change in the way consumers are, are operating. They're going from place to place. Um, and so it's, it's really interesting to look at that. Um, in, in terms of specific selling strategies um, through a mobile device, um, what are your recommendations in terms of what hotels and hotel organizations have to be considering to, to, to monetize this? There, you mentioned the behavior has shifted, it's moved, and, and there's more of an immediacy around this. Um, but does this mean different pricing? Does it mean different uh, rich media content that must be generated? What, what needs to be part of the planning Well, on, on the pricing side, I've never seen an industry more obsessed with pricing parity. I mean, there's so many distribution deals out there uh, and so many guarantees that, that, distribut or that distributors have placed for low price guarantee and properties have placed for low price guarantee that while consumers, I think, have, have been traditionally quite interested in an online shopping world in price, they're looking more for value and they're looking more for differentiation um, that, are, that is connected to their journey. So I, th I think we're going to see um, less interest that a consumer has in impulsive or quick buying decisions through mobile devices and more expansive decision making that they're going to make through, through mobile devices as they, they research their trip. Uh, one other point related to that that you mentioned about the concept of mobility uh, and something that, that property owners, uh, hotel property owners have to keep in mind. Uh, there's a um, an acronym floating around out there now, now called BYOD, Bring Your Own Device. It used to be that hotels invested in um, entertainment systems, um, in-room um, movie systems, um, kiosk systems. Now all of those activities are in the smartphone that every member of the family is bringing into the property with them, in the tablet that maybe the family is bringing in with them. Uh, or in, even in the laptop computer that they continue to bring with them. So uh, the uh, hotel operator can't count on systems that they have in place um, as being the primary touch point with the mobile travel uh, traveler. They need to be thinking of what services they need to be offering, either out on the open web or through a brand that if they're a franchisee um, they're working with, or if they're an independent hotel operator, what local business deals they have with other partners in that locality that may be instantly available um, to uh, someone who has brought their own device to your hotel. It seems like there's a shift needed here in, in investment in the way um, maybe less spending less on in-property infrastructure and more thinking about connectivity, thinking about investing in experiences that could be accessed through a mobile device as they go out and travel. Um, I, I think looking at the convergence of social media and local, this is uh, a concept that's been discussed a lot in the industry over the past couple of years. And we've seen hotel organization like Ritz-Carlton take all the, the expertise that they already have in-house, their concierge team, even the president of the company sharing his personal favorites of in each destination, putting that uh, into Foursquare as part of their brand. And so they're tapping into a social network 
all that information is accessible on a mobile device. And uh, have you seen any other examples of, of where this has really become almost a communications issue, although we're still talking about mobile and we're still considering that mobile experience? Well, if I could refer back to the Nielsen study we, we, we talked about in Team News, um, an overwhelming percentage of consumers still prefer apps to web platforms. And that's a challenge if, if you're a uh, hotel owner or a property owner. Do you put your mobile strategy into a web-based platform that is accessible through a tablet or a smartphone? Or do you put your strategy into an app that needs to be developed to, uh, in a custom way native to that particular device, whether it's a Blackberry, an Android phone, or, a, or an, an iPhone? And I don't think that has sorted itself yet. If you want to be in the game, you're going to need a website that is both experiential and transactional, but you're also going to need um, at least to consider some kind of apps that will work for your specific locale, your specific type of hotel, uh, your specific audience that you're going after, uh, because that's what they seem to be preferring. So you're sort of between a rock and a hard place on, on what the right way to go is. Unfortunately, the answer from an investment standpoint is they both appear to be the right way for now. It hasn't, fi it hasn't shaken out finally. That's good. That's good. Well, we hope you enjoyed this segment of AHOA's educational experience um, in which we discuss social media and mobile uh, technology as it affects travel, tourism, and hospitality. Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, Josiah McKenzie from Review Pro and ask our audience if you have any further questions about this subject matter or anything about the AHOA Educational Experience Series, you can send an email to chip at ahoa.com or visit the website at www.ahoa.com. My name is Gene Quinn. I'm CEO and co-founder of T News Talking Travel Tech, and it's been a pleasure to be with you today.